hi guys welcome back to my channel today you're actually joining me in my office rather than my kitchen because i thought it'd be a really good time to go through my celiac disease diagnosis story with you now for those of you who follow my blog you'll know that i have celiac disease for those of you who don't know what that is it's an autoimmune illness it basically means that when you eat gluten which is a protein found in things like wheat um, barley rye a lot of different grains your body basically sees it as an attack, it starts to attack itself, it forms antibodies and it basically attacks the lining of the small intestine. And what that then does is, what a doctor actually explained it to me in a really good way, is that you have villi on the inside of your small intestine which go like this. So if you think of that like a plush deep pile carpet, and what that does is increases the surface area for when you're absorbing food. Now, when you have celiac disease and it's undiagnosed and your body is attacking the inside of your small intestine, it actually completely wears down those villi. So if you imagine it then turns from like a plush carpet to like a grotty hospital or office carpet, completely flat, no sort of waves, that's what it's like when you've got celiac disease. So instead of having all this area to absorb food, you've basically got nothing which ties in really nicely with how my diagnosis started so i was diagnosed with celiac disease when i was about 13 years old but i would say that my symptoms lasted for a, a, probably a few years before that so it started off i was a very small child i was very slim wasn't really growing um i looked very very skinny and I think I've got a picture of what I look like at my worst, which I will post here for you all to look at. Please excuse my horrid fashion sense. There is no excuse for those trousers. And basically, I was really, really skinny. And my parents were a bit concerned as to why I wasn't really growing. I was the shortest in my class. And all my friends were shooting up and starting to develop. And I was just this tiny little child running around, very hyperactive. And I used to also get these really bad stomach aches. So I just complained that my stomach kind of hurt. And it was a really odd feeling to describe. It wasn't necessarily like a pain, like a stabbing pain. It was just kind of like this constant ache. And of course, I loved cereal. I loved pasta. I ate a lot of those foods, which probably explains why I had these kind of constant stomach symptoms. But a lot of people with celiac disease have things like sickness, diarrhea, terrible stomach cramps. And I never really got any of that, it was just this kind of dull ache, but mainly the fact that I just wasn't really growing or developing. So we started going to see my doctor, and I did that classic child thing where I'd be like, Mom, my stomach hurts, and then she'd book a doctor's appointment, we'd turn up at the doctor, she'd explain it all, and the doctor would say to me, how are you? And I'd be like, no, I'm fine. And it used to drive her nuts, because every time we went to the doctor I'd just be like oh, I'm fine I'm fine and I don't really know why I did it and to be honest sometimes I feel like I still do that with doctors probably shouldn't so we kept going back to the doctor and initially they thought it might be a lactose intolerance and I remember just telling everyone oh my gosh I'm lactose intolerant I thought it was like the coolest diagnosis ever I don't really know why so we tried cutting out the lactose, we tried cutting out down things like milk, but it just wasn't really working. I was still really skinny, I was still really small, and we are getting a bit infuriated about this. So we just ended up keep going back and forward to the doctors without really much luck. They were a bit stumped as to what it is that was bothering me. And then one day we made an appointment with my GP and he wasn't there and we went to actually see a different doctor, one that we'd never seen before. And he sat down and listened to us. And he was like, have you thought about being tested for celiac disease? Me and my mum were like, being tested for what? No one had mentioned celiac to us at this point. So he was like, yeah, explain what it was, sent me for a blood test. That blood test came back saying that I was indicating a positive diagnosis. So then I had to keep eating gluten and have an endoscopy. Now I remember being a bit nervous about this and basically saying I'm not having one unless they put me to sleep. I was very adamant, even though it was about 12, I was very adamant that that is not happening unless I go to sleep. Now, a lot of people I know who've had them under sedation say they're absolutely fine. They say they can't really remember any of it, and I know that for a lot of people facing a diagnosis, that's probably a big worry. Now, I wish I could reassure you, but I honestly don't really remember my procedure at all. I remember that I was allowed to have a general anaesthetic, so we went to hospital, it was like a day surgery type thing. 
um, and went on to like a children's ward and I had my general anaesthetic and woke up and was fine and that's all I know like a lot of people I know have had it in sedation they've said that they don't remember it either so if you are concerned about an endoscopy I would say please don't worry too much about that part although the idea of having a tube so basically for those who don't know an endoscopy is a camera that's put down your throat and they will then put that down into your gut and they take a very small sample to do a biopsy now the idea now of having a camera put down my throat is horrible but I think now I would probably opt for a sedation I've had so many people say that they've been fine under sedation that I think that that would be acceptable for me but as a child I was doing my proper teenage thing and I was like no I'm general anaesthetic or nothing. Did the biopsy and that came back indicating that I had celiac disease and it was really that simple. We then got referred straight to see a dietitian. I was also seeing a paediatrician at the same time so he was very helpful I remember vaguely in kind of giving us advice and I remember going to see this dietitian and coming away with a whole list of companies to contact for free sample boxes. Now I believe that when you get diagnosed now, you can still apply to certain prescription companies, places like Juvella, Glutafin, to get a free sample box. So it's basically like, here's this autoimmune disease, here's a free goodie box to say well done. So I was in my element, I was getting boxes of food sent to the house, it was great. And as a child, I didn't really like things like cakes, um, I didn't really like, well I probably like cake, but I didn't really like like sandwiches. I loved pasta and cereal, but we were able to get gluten free alternatives to that, which I was really happy about. And of course, when I was diagnosed, this was back in 2002, I was 13, and it was still a time when you could get gluten free food on prescription. And what they classed as basics was things like biscuits, flour, pasta, crackers, pizza bases, there was so much on prescription and now I know a lot of areas have cut back but believe me there was no throw from aisle back then. I remember there being this very tiny end corner of a shelf in the supermarket and it was basically a loaf of bread that was rock solid and a packet of Mrs Crimble's macaroons and that was it, that was the free from aisle. So it's definitely come a long way. Once I went on to a gluten free diet I'm pretty sure my kind of body weight and everything went up relatively well and I was also diagnosed with an overactive thyroid around the same time and that is something I would like to do another video on because there is a whole other story on that but basically I think once the two things were nailed I shot up in height, I started growing, I started putting on weight, I was a lot more healthy and I think it's just really like a testament to the fact that once you have that diagnosis, it can really change your health. And for me, now I eat on a gluten-free diet, I think it's just kind of changed my life really. And I wouldn't really, um, I'd never advocate going on a gluten-free diet without professional advice. I think if you think you have a problem with gluten, you must go see your GP because the first really important lesson from this is that you have to be eating gluten for I think it's about six weeks consistently to get a proper diagnosis of celiac. Otherwise your biopsy results won't be right, they won't be reliable. And I know so many people that were told to go on a gluten-free diet without getting tested and now they wish they'd been able to have that test. But for them, it would mean having to go back onto gluten after years of not eating it and it's just not a nice prospect. So. I would say if you are worried that you might have any issues with gluten, please go see your GP. It's not scary. Ask them to be tested for celiac disease. And if you have any problems, please contact Celiac UK because they are so helpful. They're an amazing charity and they really need our support at the moment. They do great things for people with celiac disease. So they are always ready to help you. So yeah, that's about it really, my celiac story. I know that a lot of people that I've spoken to have had really different symptoms, so some people have stomach symptoms, some have been diagnosed through things like headaches and brain fog. If I eat gluten by accident now, it doesn't happen very often, but I do get the worst brain fog and it's like this curtain just comes down and I just can't think about anything and I'm exhausted and 
my stomach aches like a proper like hangover ache. You know when you've drunk too much the night before and you're just like, what? It's like that. So really important there if you do think you have any symptoms and I will pop a couple of links in the description down here. Um, I'm gonna link to my diagnosis story in full written format. Um, which may be more coherent than this video. I'm going to link to a couple of posts I've done as well about celiac disease and symptoms you might not realise are anything to do with celiac, as well as what to do when you're first diagnosed and how to live a happy gluten-free life because that is what I think is highly possible and I want you all to realise that being gluten-free can actually be really fun. So I really hope that you found this video interesting. Sorry if I've just waffled on for ages, but I wanted to really talk to you about my diagnosis because I think it's helpful to hear other people's stories. So if you like this video and you'd like more explainers like this, do let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions, let me know as well and I'll do my best to answer them. But I will be back next week with a nice little recipe for you. So please do give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe and I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye.